Hello and welcome. You are watching Impact Television, a part of the media ministry from Forgiven Church located in Bluffton and Fort Wayne, Indiana. We pray that you would have an open mind and ears to hear what God would say to you today. So let's dive right in to one of Pastor Scott's or Pastor Michelle's previous teachings taught at Forgiven Church. Enjoy. Grab your Bibles, hold them up high, repeat after me, say, this is my Bible. And I believe it was written for me to understand and agree with. I am what it says I am, set free from all the power of the enemy. I will do what it says to do. Then I will see that it is reality. Amen. All right, high five your neighbors on the way down. Time they looking good. Good to see all of you. All right. Praise the Lord. Well, let me ask the question I've been asking every week over the last couple of months since we've been talking about spiritual gifts. How many of you guys are getting a little more excited about them? Right, 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 right. If you're not excited about them, it's because you don't know anything about it, right? Because the Bible says we should be excited about these, right? And tonight, I believe, is going to be almost the last night, unless going into I, for time's sake, I might end up going into the next week. I don't know. But 1 Corinthians chapter 14 on the screen really quick. It does say this, 1 Corinthians 14, 1. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially what? Prophecy. And that's what we actually talked about last week. Um, now, if you're not excited about that, the Bible tells you to get excited about it. See, the thing about it is, how many of you guys know we need to be not just hearers of the Word, but doers of the Word? Right? And if he says you need to be excited about these things, you need to be excited about them. But it's hard to be excited about something you don't know anything about. Right? So very, very good. So here we go. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter what again? Where's it at? Right. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Very good. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And as soon as I get there, I'll start reading. I don't know if it'll be the last time or not. We'll see time-wise. Here we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning in verse 1. <coughs> Excuse me. says this. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed or ignorant or lacking knowledge is what that talks about. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or another, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts. How many of again are we talking about here? Right, nine gifts. You go so good. You're all learning. That's awesome, right? Nine gifts. But the same Spirit distributes them. And what Spirit again is that? The Holy Spirit, because it's a capital S, right? Very good. And then he says this. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord, okay? And the service we know is the person that the gift is flowing through, but yet it's still Jesus doing it, right? Because we know the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are one. Three or one, right? Okay. And then it's just like you're three and one, right? The real using spirit, you have a soul and you live in this earth suit, right? And then it says this, there are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. To each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. And that was, we said every week, it's for what good? The common good. And it's what? Good. So it's good when these gifts flow. And when they don't flow, that means it's, it's bad. Which means it's bad that the majority of churches don't have a revelation of this. Because if you don't have a revelation of this, they're not going to flow. And did you know that when those children were up here, they were actually flowing in those? And what gift would have that been? What we talked about last week, which was what? Prophecy. Out of children. So let me just say something. If the children can step out and do it, the adults ought to be stepping out and doing it when the Spirit's given the unction, right, to be able to do it. Then he says this, To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another the message of knowledge by the means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking uh, in different kinds of tongues, and to still the other the interpretation of tongues, all these are the work of the one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one just as He determines. And we know that God wants how many people to get in on this? Everybody. Right. So we need to know this. No matter who you are, 
We need to be ready at any time for the Spirit of God to want to go flow through us. Amen? We don't want to sit there and say, oh, God's never going to use me. Because people have that mentality. God doesn't want to use me. I'm just this or I'm just that or look what I did last week. God's never going to use me again. Poor pitiful me. No, he uses poor pitiful you and poor pitiful me. Right? Because it doesn't matter really how good we are. It's up to him. And like I said in the Old Testament, remember when God spoke through a donkey? Right? And if he's going to speak through an ass, we all, we all good. Right? If he's going to talk through a donkey, man, we're all cool. So just remember, you're better than, than that, right? Okay, moving right along. Uh, I, I, well, actually, let me just review these really quick since this is almost our last time. The word of knowledge is um, a divine revelation, if you remember, about persons, places, or things in the past or the present in the supernatural knowledge of God. Word of wisdom has to do with what, again? Right, it has to do with your future. So the word of knowledge has to do with the past or the present. We know the word of knowledge has to do with the future. We talked about the discerning of the spirits, which is the ability to see or hear into the spiritual realm, right? You need to see like God sees things. You need to be seeing things with the eye of faith. Kind of like what, what Canaan was talking about tonight. You can get your spiritual eyes open. You got to start seeing that chains are no longer on you. The problem is too many people still think they're chained down. No, you've been, those chains are broken, right? So very, very important. Uh, we talked about uh, special faith. Remember, special faith was wonder-working faith, and it is beyond simple saving faith, all right, or what we normally walk by faith. It is, it is something that receives a miracle. It does not do the miracle, but it allows you to be able to receive a miracle. And if you remember, a miracle is supernatural assistance to something in this realm, right? It, it's not something that you can conjure up. It's not something that you can create. A miracle has to do with supernatural assistance, right? Very important. And then we also talked about gifts of healing. Gifts of healing has uh, the ability of somebody else or healing flow through somebody else for you, right? Now, we do know this. According to Scripture, we are already what? We're already healed according to Scripture. By his stripes, you were or you are healed. Talking about physical healing. Right? That is something that anybody can receive one-on-one -on -one with. And no matter what you're dealing with, it doesn't matter if it's a hangnail, it doesn't matter if it's stage four cancer. You can all receive healing one-on-one -on -one from God. Okay? But many, time, there, many times there are people where their faith really just isn't there and they need some assistance. And they need God to come in and, and inspire you through somebody else and allow a gift of healing to flow through them to you, because remember, it's for the common good. These gifts don't flow for your benefit. They flow for, through what? For somebody else's benefit, right? So just remember, you can, you can one-on-one -on -one receive from God all that you need, right? And that is not a scary thing. Now, I know people have twisted it. They've manipulated what they would call faith healing, right? There are some people that have done stupid stuff. There are people out there who say, well, I don't go to doctors, or I'll never take an ibuprofen, or I'll never whatever. Well, that's stupid, Okay, I'm just being real honest with you. Most doctors are not bad, but they're just practicing, though. Right? I, I remember what Jeff told me. Uh, we were talking about some of this before, and, and Jeff told me before, he goes, you know, you got to think about this. 50% of the doctors were in the lower half of their class. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of true, huh? 50, you know, I mean, really, you think about it, they're, they're still just out there practicing. You know, but it's not bad, because sometimes it's kind of good to get a diagnosis of what you're dealing with. If you don't know, it's good to find out what name you're dealing with because then you can take care of that name, amen? So there's, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? So some people, they get so super spiritual. I'll never go to a doctor. I'll never take an ibuprofen. I'll never do this. You know what? If ibuprofen helps you till you get your total manifestation of healing, there's no sin in that, okay? I'm, I just want to be clear with that, okay? Some people think, well, Pastor, do you go to the doctor? Well, every now and then. But usually the doctor has to go back and look at the records when we show up because they go, well, Says you were here before, but I don't ever, I don't know, I'm, man, I don't remember who you are. It's been such a long time. I, I like that. that. That's a good thing. Saves yeah. money. All right? It's very good. All right? And then we've also talked about, uh, last week we talked about prophecy. Okay? Now, if you remember, prophecy was for three main things. It was for the strengthening, the encouragement, and the comfort of people. It had nothing to do with the future. If you remember that. Most people, they think, oh, somebody's going to prophesy. They're going to talk about your future. No, that would be a word of what again? Right, a word of wisdom. Old Testament, it would have been prophecy. New Testament 
right? Prophecy is for the strengthening, encouraging, and comfort of people. It has nothing to do with your future. And just because you prophesy does not make you a prophet, right? Now, the children that were up here, anybody encouraged by what they said tonight? It was very simple, very simple, but it was encouraging. It was comforting, right? It was strengthening. That was flowing through them. When they're coming up and say, well, I believe God told me this to tell you that, and it, it was edifying, that's good, that's God. And if God can move through children, he can move through adults. The problem is that so many adults have got so much tradition in the way it's always supposed to be that they never listen to the Holy Spirit pounding on their heart, you know, or whatever it is, you know? So what we need to do is we need to get Jesus in our head like, like Jordan said, which is what? What we're doing right now, learning the word of God, renewing our minds, right? That was really good what he had to say, by the way. You need to get Jesus in your head. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's, that, that, that's this, the Bible. You need to get Jesus in your head. So let's continually get Jesus in our head here, right? Moving right along, we're going to be talking about tongues and interpretation of tongues tonight, okay? Which is one of the most confusing things to people which I don't know why, because it's right there in the Bible. Now, I want to let you know this. I'm only going to be talking about a little bit tonight, but on Sunday, I want to encourage you all to be here on Sunday. I'm going to go through a whole lot more on Sunday, because you notice uh, the previous weeks before Resurrection Sunday, and then last week was Resurrection Sunday, and then the Sunday before that, I ta actually talked about the crucifixion and the details of the crucifixion. You guys remember all that? And the day that Jesus was actually crucified, it wasn't a Friday, but it was a Wednesday. Remember we went through all that stuff? Well, if you remember before that, we were talking about what? Baptism of the Holy Spirit, a separate experience, right? So I'm going to be actually talking about more about tongues on Sunday, this Sunday. So I'm kind of doing a little bit tonight and a whole lot more this Sunday. So make sure you see that or you get that. If you're not going to be here, you want to make sure you get that teaching, right? Now, this is also two areas that Jesus did not flow in, okay? I know this, that Jesus flowed in all those other gifts. But when it comes to tongues and interpretation, Jesus didn't flow in them because they hadn't happened yet. Jesus said, we are going to do that. But he did not do that because it didn't happen yet until the day of Pentecost, if you guys remember, right? So if you look at me, go, go with me, just put it on the screen, Mark 16. We'll just look at it really quick. Mark 16, 15, it says this. He said to them, and this is Jesus speaking, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. So question for you, how many of you would say you're saved in here? All right, you say you're believed, okay? Everybody's raising their hands, okay? So this means this applies to you, right? It says this, and these signs will accompany all of those who just raised their hands. That's a paraphrased version, right? It says, in my name, they will drive out demons. They will, say they will. They will speak in new tongues. He didn't say these signs will follow a few people who believe. He said, these signs will follow those who believe. Now, this tongue that he's talking about here is actually about your personal prayer language. Okay? Because we do know this. Back in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the gifts of the Spirit are as the Holy Spirit wills. Right? And we know that tongues, those tongues everybody is not going to flow through because it's as the Holy Spirit wills, correct? But these tongues is the will of God for everybody. So we know this, there are two different types of tongues. See, and that's where most people get confused. They don't have the revelation. They all think tongues are the exact same thing. Now, the word tongues means the same thing and what it is from the original word glossia, which means languages. Okay, that's all it means. It says you will speak in different languages, okay? Now, you, your prayer language can be a specific language, a specific tongue. Or the gift of the Spirit coming down can be a different language, and it can sound different, okay? So you have two different types of tongues. You have your personal what prayer, and which way does prayer go? Well, we would say up to God, even though he lives right here. We know what we're talking about, right? Prayer goes this way. Gifts of the Spirit go which way? This way. So we have two different types of tongues. 
Okay, so this is why you got to get not just tonight's teaching, but Sunday's teaching. I might even go into next week, depending on how, how, how uh, things keep flowing, right? So that's very, very important, right, that we understand that. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. Look over there. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1. It says this. If I speak in the tongues or the languages of men or of angels... But do not have love. I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. Right? Now, do you notice there he doesn't just say, he doesn't just say there's earthly languages. He says there's what? There's angelic languages. There's heavenly languages. Okay? Another translation of this says, even if I could speak all the languages of the earth and all the different angelic heavenly languages... So question for you, for everybody who's so understanding in this, especially the people who are against it, how fluent are you in angelic? You can, you can speak the languages of all the angels, the creatures flying around the throne. The one, all the, I'm telling you, there, there are so many languages out there and so many people, they judge us and they criticize us when they don't know what they're talking about. And can I tell you something that really frustrates me? There are churches that will preach against this, and they'll take that one verse, say, the, the Bible says, do all speak in tongues? No. They'll take that out of context, and they'll preach some little 10, 15-minute sermon on tongues when, first of all, they don't speak in tongues. They're not baptized in the Holy Spirit. They don't even know what they're talking about. And they got a whole church going, yes, amen, I guess that's right. First of all, and I'll show that this Sunday, when it says do all speak in tongues, that's not talking about even the gifts of the Spirit or your personal prayer language. That's talking about ministry gifts, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, or teachers. That's what that's going to be talking about. And I'll show you that on Sunday. Well, is everybody called in the fivefold ministry? No, only very few people are. Very, very few people are. So when it says, do all speak in tongues, it's even, even out of the five. Do all speak in tongues. Well, of course it's no. Because not everybody's called in. The, I'll explain that all on Sunday. You've got to be here. Trust me. You don't want to miss that. But it's amazing how many people, they don't know what they're talking about when it comes to tongues. You know, and, and, and it's such an awesome, wonderful gift when it's flowing this way. Now, go with me to 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14, and let's talk a little bit about tongues coming from the gift of tongues that we're talking about. The gift of the Spirit and the interpretation of tongues, okay? So 1 Corinthians 14, beginning in verse 22, it says this. Tongues then are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers. Okay, now wait a minute. But yeah, we know when the Bible says for all these, these signs shall follow those who believe, they shall speak in new tongues, right? That's talking about your personal prayer language, which every believer God is expecting to have. And I can show you chapter and verse. It's the will of God for every single believer to have their personal prayer language. But here, right, it comes this way. So here he says this, tongues then are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers. Prophecy, however, is not for unbelievers, but for what? Believers. believers. That means that then happens in the church. Okay? Now there are times that there are tongues and interpretations in church. But there should be more prophecy in church than tongues and interpretations. Okay? Moving right along, it says this. So if the whole church comes together and everyone speaks in tongues and inquiries or, or inquirers or unbelievers come in, will they not say that you are out of your mind? Yes, they will, because I've heard them say that before. Okay? But if an unbeliever or an inquirer comes with every, when everyone is prophesying, they are convicted of sin and are brought under judgment by all as the secrets of their hearts are laid bare. So they will fall down and worship God, exclaiming, God is really among you. What then shall we say, brothers and sisters, when you come together? Each of you has a hem or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. Right? Now remember, these gifts are for the common good. Right? So if they're for the common good, when these gifts flow, they build you up, even a tongue and an interpretation. Right? And then it says this. It says, uh, where am I at? Verse 27. If anyone speaks in a tongue, two or at the most three should speak, one at a time, and someone must interpret. Okay? That's if you are in a location when there is not an interpreter. 
And I will explain that. If there is no interpreter, well, here we go. I'll just keep on going. <laughs> the speaker should keep quiet. Okay? In the church and speak to himself and to God. Okay? So what you need to understand is this. We know that in a service, these gifts you should have at least two or three flowing. Okay? Now, tonight you need to know something. How many children went up and said something? Three. So you know what? I knew after the third one went up, I already knew that that's probably the last one, according to Scripture. See, now, if I would have been hammered by five or six other people, I would have been like, eh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Because you're only supposed to have so many. Do you know why? So you can remember them. So you can remember what's going on. And the great thing about it is, you know what I thought was really awesome? Is we even talked about it uh, last week during prophecy. Do you know how everything's supposed to be done decently and in order? Yeah. Right? You know, you can tell that the kids are even learning. Because adults, when they, they feel an unction coming up, like Amanda. When, when Ama where's Amanda at? Is Amanda in here still? Oh, she's, she's back there. She felt that she had that vision that was coming up, right? Of, of, of how for God to be able to come and pull you up out of your battles... You know how many guys can, can you can picture Jesus coming on his horse and picking you up right out of the middle of the battle and, and taking you out of the battle, right? But the, 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 the vision was, yeah, but you've got to understand, this and Jesus are the same thing. And this will get you out of your battle. You know, is what, is what she was saying, what, the, the, what she was seeing. So it's very, very, very important. But you notice they come up and they acknowledge themselves. They don't just thus say the Lord bless. The kids, you know what they did? They acknowledged themselves. They waited. Canaan came to me. Actually, during the second song, I don't know if any of you guys saw him, but he came up to me and he started talking. He goes, man, I think God just talked to me over there. And I think this is what he told me to say. And then I told him, I said, okay. I said, that sounds pretty good. I said, it's not quite. I, I said, but I said, if I feel that, that there's a certain time that that needs to be shared, I said, I'll let you know. And he goes, okay. Well, guess what? Right after the third song was going, Pastor Michelle had said something very similar to what he had told me. I said, now's the time. There was your confirmation. Right? So it all just kind of flows decently and it's all done in order, just like the Bible says. That's good stuff. I mean, that's, that's really exciting, right? Here we go. Uh, look with me at the New Living Translation on here. It says this. It says, so you see that speaking in tongues is a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers. Prophecy, however, is for the benefit of believers, not unbelievers. Even so, if unbelievers are people who don't understand these things come into your church meetings and hear everyone speaking in an unknown language, they will think you are crazy. But if all of you are prophesying and unbelievers or people who don't understand these things come into your meetings, they will be convicted of sin and judged by what you say. As they listen... Their secret thoughts will be exposed. Because remember, that's what prophecy does. We even talked about that last week, right? It brings, it, it, it brings what's, what's been hidden out into the public, right? And then it says, and they will fall to their knees and worship God, declaring God is truly here among you. Well, my brothers and sisters, let's summarize. When you meet together, one will sing, another will teach, another will tell some special revelation God has given. One will speak in tongues, and another will interpret what is said. But everything that is done must strengthen all of you. Right? No matter, so, so no more than two or three should speak in tongues. They must speak one at a time, and someone must interpret what they say. Okay? But if there is no one present who can interpret, they must be silent in your church meeting and speak in tongues to God privately. Now, one thing we got to understand is this. When you speak in tongues, or all these gifts that we've talked about before, when the gifts of the Spirit flow, they are subject to us. We can say no. We've talked about that. Now, many times you don't want to do that because you're quenching the Holy Spirit. But in time, as these gifts flow more and more and more and more and more, and there's tongues coming up, a lot of times there will be one or two people that are usually people that do the interpretation. It usually, for whatever reason, it's like, like my wife. Most of the time, you know that the, uh, a prophetic gift flows through her. It's very encouraging. It's very uplifting. You can tell when, when she's talking and all of a sudden, I would say there's a shift. There's a, something going on. That's when that gift starts flowing out. 
It's a prophetic gift, okay? There are people that, for whatever reason, because they have flown in the interpretation, they just keep usually flowing in the interpretation and God flows through them, okay? And so usually in a congregation, you'd have one or two people that usually do it. Well, if you're there and all of a sudden you feel like a tongue's coming on, well, and you know those people are not at church that night, there's a good chance you want to hold that. There's a good chance. The reason why is somebody else may not have the unction to step out. Though God will use somebody else, he will. But there's a good chance that a lot of people won't step out because most everybody else is going to think the exact same thing. Oh, George isn't here. Oh, Bob's, oh, Bob's, oh, good, Bob's in the back, guys. Bob, see Bob back there? Bob's an interpreter, so if anybody gets a tongue, just let it rip. He'll interpret it. But if George isn't here and Bob's not here, you better keep quiet. And most people, they'll just have that mentality. You see what I'm saying? And that's exactly what they're thinking. People just, usually, there's certain people that will flow in certain gifts more than others. Why? Just because they've stepped on that, right? Say what? It does say that there's some people that do flow in it. Right. 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 Certain people that you know are definitely flowing in it. Right. Right. So did you get what she said? She goes, you need to pay attention to who's flowing in these gifts. It, it's important that you pay attention. You know? Oh, so-and-so flows in the gifts. Oh, so-and-so flows in this gift on a regular basis. So you can start doing that. But remember, it, especially when it comes to interpretation, that is. Now, a lot of the other gifts, don't be running to other people and just say, can you prophesy over me? Don't do that. You're going to be out of line because that's as the Holy Spirit wills. Remember, but when it comes to interpretation, this is one that they tell you to keep your eyes open on. Keep, you know specific people usually flow in these gifts. Uh, back at City on the Hill, Pastor Steve, he is the interpreter. He, there, there are six, seven, eight people at their church that will flow in the tongues, and their tongues are all totally different. And Pastor Steve is the one that always, for whatever, it, it, the gift always flows through. I've seen one other person besides Pastor Steve give the interpretation at his church. But usually, Pastor Steve is the one that always gives uh, the interpretation there. So that's just how the gift flows, all right? So very, very, very important. Now, I want to show you that in the church setting, you do need, do need to have the interpretation. Why? Because you need to know what's being said, right? God is not going to come down and go, blah, 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 blah. And then you go, well, there's no benefit of that, right? Which I'm actually going to be explaining a whole lot more on Sunday. Go with me to Acts chapter 2. Let me show you this. Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. Oh, boy, i got to hurry up. It says this, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Remember, this is a separate experience besides salvation. All of them were filled. How many were filled? All. Right, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Okay. Now there was staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each of them heard their own language being spoken. Right? Yeah. See, God is not going to give everybody Spanish. Right? He might give you German, he might give you Brazilian, he might give you French, he might give you angelic, he might give you something else, he might give you something else. You never know. And here there was tons of people from all over the region there that spoke several different languages or had a native language, right? And it says, um, utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all of these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? And then it goes through all the people that were there. And if you jump down to verse 11, it says, We hear them declaring the wonders of God. Ever say the wonders of God? Notice it doesn't say Satan or the devil. Right? When you speak in tongues, it never ever in the Bible do you ever say it was of the devil. Even though you'll have people, preachers say, well, anybody who speaks in tongues, it's of the devil. Because God don't do that. No and nowhere does it ever say it's of the devil. They're always prophesying and edifying and, 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 and speaking of God, right? It says, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. And it says, amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Now, question for you. Who interpreted that? Nobody. There was no interpreter there. So wouldn't this contradict scripture when Paul says, you can't speak in a tongue unless there's an interpreter? Well, yeah. You need to have an interpreter 
if there are people there that don't know the tongue that's being, that's being shared. But there are times when you do not need an interpreter, okay? Here, the Holy Spirit came down on all of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, right? And they all spoke in tongues. They all spoke in a different native language. And all these people understood them. And because they all understood, you don't need an interpreter, okay? That's how it flows. And there are examples of this. Uh, Pastor Steve, I remember one time uh, in, in his church service, that there was a lady there, she was a first time attender, and so she was also a foreigner, she was from a different country. And so she was sitting in there, and Pastor Steve's preaching a message, and he's talking, and he's teaching, and, and, and all of a sudden, he, go, he goes into tongues. So he's sitting there talking in English, speaking in English, and the next thing you know, he just, boom, tongues just come right out. And he goes into tongues for like about a minute. Well, this lady who was visiting for the first time that was not from America freaked out and she ran out the back she was kind of sitting in the back corner she freaked out she's like oh and she takes off goes out the doors well what do you got to do you got to have ushers go help her out right find out what's going on now some people who don't understand tongues they'll hear tongues and they'll freak out because they don't they don't even know what's going on okay that's not why she freaked out she freaked out because when Pastor Steve went in tongues, he went into her native language, and a word of knowledge came through that, that, that native language and literally was talking about her, her name, what's going on in her life, all this kind of stuff. Nobody else knew what was, what was going on, but she knew exactly everything that was being said because it was directly towards her, but yet Pastor Steve had no idea. So these ushers follow around and say, no, 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 that's Bible, it's God, it's, it's, it's called tongues and, and interpretation of tongues. And so this, it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians 14, this actually, she goes, no, 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 that's not why I'm freaking out. She goes, I'm freaking out because that man told me all this stuff about me, and he said my name, and I've never met him before in my life. I don't know if she sounded like that, but you know what I'm talking about, all right? <laughs> Just trying to throw a little twist in there, you know? And, and so she, she, she was, I mean, how many of you guys know that's going to get your attention? You show up to a church you've never met anybody before at all, and, and the, the pastor's speaking, and all of a sudden, bam, a tongue comes out and just totally nails her right where she's at. I love that. I think that's awesome because God's trying to get her attention. And that, was the, I, I, that, is, that got her attention, trust me. And, I mean, it just totally changed her life, you know? And that's the things that need to be happening. When, when someone comes in this place, and you've never met them, and they've never met anybody in here. And that's one reason why when a tongue and an interpretation comes out, that's why you usually need two different people, to be honest with you. Okay? Sometimes it does flow where one person will have the tongue, and they will give the interpretation. Okay? Um, that is, okay, the Bible's not against that, but they do, it does emphasize that someone else should give the interpretation. That is why, that, that means there's not going to be any personal twist on it. That means there's going to be accountability. That means, that means somebody else has no idea that a tongue is coming out and, and somebody else is going to be given the interpretation. Does that make sense? So it's very, very important that we understand that. I remember another uh, uh, situation uh, when we were down at Bible school. Uh, one, of the minister, uh, one of the guest ministers was there and he was talking about how this gift of tongues and interpretation flowed uh, through one of the missionaries that was there. So one of the missionaries, to make a long story short, uh, for time's sake, uh, he was just sitting at a bus stop. And he did not know how to say, he, he needed an interpreter everywhere he went because he did not know anything about the language there. So he's sitting at a bus stop getting, waiting for a bus, and the bus was about 10 minutes, away, 10 minutes away, and so all he decided to do is just start speaking in tongues. So he's just down there, and he's like, oh, Dad, you know, however he was speaking in tongues, whatever he was speaking in tongues. And all of a sudden, people around him started weeping. People started getting on their knees. They started raising their hands. And he's like, what is going on? He, he had no idea what was going on. Well, a guy ends up coming up that can speak English and the language that was being spoken. And so he goes, he goes sir, do you, do you know what you're telling these people? And he goes, I'm not telling them nothing. And he goes, no, you are he goes, you're telling them about this, this man named Jesus. And you're telling them this. And, and this guy sitting there speaking in tongues, and he's reading these people's mail. He has no idea what he's saying, because that's what the Bible says. It says you're, you're unprofitable. And I'm going to be talking about that more on Sunday of why. Because can I tell you something? There's a good chance you'll screw it up if you try to figure it out. But see, when you're just sitting there and you're just praying in the Spirit, it's awesome. And you, that's how you pray without ceasing. You just keep praying. It's just absolutely. And I'm going to show you the benefits of it even on Sunday, why you do that. But he's sitting there, and all these people around him got saved at a bus stop. 
because he starts praying in the spirit. And this guy comes and interprets what he, he sir, this person said, you told him this and you told him this and that's true and you told this one that and this told that and you told this one that and, you, and these people are all just shocked by what's going on around here. I don't know about you, but I think my God's big enough to do something like that. Yeah. But see, if you don't know about this stuff, and especially if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, which is a separate experience of salvation with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, that's never going to flow in your life. And you were totally missing out. Yeah, it is the will of God for everybody, and I'm going to, like say, prove that to you. Let me show you this uh, really quick, and we'll finish over here. 1 Corinthians 14, uh, 39. Just go ahead and put that on the screen, if you would. 1 Corinthians 14, 39. It says this. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy, and do not forbid speaking in tongues. Right? Next translation. Or, yeah, but everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. Next translation says, I believe you got one back there. Oh, I didn't give you the amplified back there? Okay, that's good anyways. But you notice he says, don't forbid speaking in tongues. And how many, what I would call denominations, churches, they forbid speaking in tongues. If they find out that you yabba dabba do, they will say, do not do that here. Yet the Bible says, it says, don't, don't, don't forbid it. The Bible says, don't forbid it. And even Paul the Apostle, we've said this before, Paul the Apostle, he even wrote in the scriptures. And how many of you guys know the scriptures are truth? So there's no, there's no error or lie. In he said, I speak in tongues more than all of you. So you're telling me that over the majority of churches that are against speaking in tongues, you're telling me if Paul the Apostle was alive today, he couldn't preach in your pulpit? Because you and your denomination don't want to go there? That's pretty sad. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going there. Because God says that these signs are going to follow those who believe. And there, there are so many benefits why these things got to happen, okay? So just remember, out of the mouth, most two or three are going to be done. And they're going to be done decently. And they're going to be done in order. But there are going to be times that you do not need an interpreter, okay? You need an interpreter when the people don't know the language that's coming forth. But when the people know the language, there is no need for an interpreter. So we got to make sure we keep scripture in context when it comes to the tongues and the interpretation of tongues. Okay. So on Sunday, for a time, I'm done now. But for Sunday, I'm going to really go through 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 uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, and I'm going to show you where where Paul's flip flopping between your personal prayer language and also speaking in tongues. Are you with me on that? Or or, or the gift of the Spirit on speaking in tongues? All right, Father, I thank you and I praise you for your word. We magnify you, we glorify you, we thank you so much for the truth that is in your word. It is the truth that sets us free. And I thank you for these gifts flowing in and through our lives, all nine of them, Lord. I thank you for these gifts flowing, not just in this branch, but also in the north branch. And we thank you, Lord, for revelation knowledge flowing through people, Lord. That way they would be prepared and ready for when you are ready to flow in and through these gifts. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. And all God's people said... Amen. All right. Hopefully you guys learned something tonight in that quick little teaching. All right. Uh, let's prepare for tithes and offerings, everybody. Got to be faithful with God's resources. Pastor Scott and Michelle, thank you for watching Impact Television, a part of the media ministry from Forgiven Church, now in two locations, Bluffton and Fort Wayne, Indiana. Great things continue to happen at Forgiven Church, and we want to give you a special invite to attend one of our life-changing services. Whether you'll be attending church for the first time, haven't been to church in a long time, or maybe you're in transition for a new place to worship, we invite you to a place where we are not perfect, but we know that we are forgiven. For more information, you can go to our website at ForgivenOnline.org. Again, that is ForgivenOnline.org. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you at church.